Yeah, this is a Bang Bang Rail. Um, this I've got a story uh, to tell about John Massey, a guy that's done 45 years. But before I, uh, I talk about that, uh, John Massey has got a book signing. Um, he's got a book. I think it's called Locks, Bolts and Bars, yeah? Um, he's got a book signing. The book signing is on the 7th, that's it, tomorrow, Saturday night, uh, Lady Hamilton, yeah? In NW5 Kentish Town, yeah? Um, listen, 45 years this guy's done. I mean, there's a big thing about Charles Bronson at the minute, all right? Uh, my mate, my mate uh, Terry Henley, yeah? My mate Terry Henley, nice, nice geezer. He's got a big scaffold company called E. A N D scaffolding company in Kentish Town. He stood by John Massey. Uh, unbelievable what he's done for him. You know what I mean? Really helped him out with money, uh, put him on the right road. Um, John Massey's a nice, nice guy. I mean, John Massey's got people that want to talk to him. Um, I was very lucky. I think uh, um, James English has done a podcast on on uh, on John Massey, and I don't know if uh, Sean Apple has done one as well. Uh, but John Massey is a nice guy. He's, all, he's asked me to do a podcast on him, which I'm going to do one. Um, I'm, I'm trying to go to the signing tomorrow um, to see John. I've spoke to John on the phone. Um, I've sort of like, I've seen the pictures of him. And he's like, sometimes it's funny to talk to him about Charles Bronson. And he says he knows Charles Bronson. He was away with Charlie. Um He's got good stories to tell about Charles Bronson. I said, well, tell me a little bit. He said, well, Charlie Bronson, he said, was like a thick set guy. Uh, but all he wanted to do, eh, he said he didn't want to, to talk to no one, really. All he wanted to do is press-ups. That's all he used to do, press-ups. He's a big guy, you know. I mean, if you're doing press-ups every day, 24-7, you're going to be big. And that's what Charles Bronson used to do. And it's very hard to talk to him, yeah. Um, but as, as, as I suppose it is the same now, it is the same. People that do... But John Massey, he's grown up for his years. Uh, he's, um, he's what, I don't know how old he is now, 70 odd years of age, perhaps, 71, um, 72, might be even more older than that. He looks well for his age, whatever he is, that age. Um, 45 years in prison. Imagine what he's gone through. I mean, his, bolt, his book, you know, Locks, I think it's called Lock, Bolts and Bars, or Locks, Bolts and Bolt, a lock bars and bolts, but I think it's called locks, bolts and bars. Yeah, what a good name for a book. You've been in prison. That's a fantastic name. Uh, the book has been released. Uh, as I say, he's got a book signing today. But you know, if people want to go there, I, I told you where it is. It's um, Lady Hamilton, uh, NW5 Kentish Town. Yeah, it's a nice pub. They're gonna. I think it's gonna be upstairs. But you know, I mean. Go. I mean, you must go. This guy, I mean, come on, to do 45, they got a big, I mean, it's a big thing at the minute about Charles Bronson. It's a big, big thing about him, you know. And yet, John Massey, they all want to talk to John Massey. Papers, everyone wants to talk to him, yeah. But, you know, John Massey is what is he's a very private guy, you know. He isn't like, uh, like uh, Charles Bronson, who's gone crazy out there. He's gone, you know, and it is. I mean, John. I mean, Charles Bronson. Listen, it's not his fault. He's done lots of birds. Uh, he's done it in a secure unit, a unit within a unit. Um, he's not grown up. Uh, he went away when he was 25, 26, and he's still 25, 26. He's got an old head. But a young, a young body and young mind. That's why he's he's very hard to uh, talk to as such. People can't get into him, especially people like, like the pro board. Anybody with authority, uh, it's it's hard uh, uh, to talk to uh, Charles Bronson. But you know, when I talk to when I talk to John Massey, John Massey's like talking to a proper proper person, mate. And he's done forty five years. Imagine the stories that he's got, you know what I mean? About Charles Bronson, about loads and loads of people. He's been away with the Crays, the Richardsons, everybody you name, he's been away with. You know, imagine the stories that he's got. I mean, I know he's done one with Jane English, maybe, maybe Sean Atworth, but he said to me that he's gonna, he's gonna confide in me more than anybody else, you know? 
I like it, mate. I like it. It's nice, yeah. Uh, everybody would like to get to see John Massey, believe, believe. But I'm going to be, I'm privileged, mate. I'm going to be privileged. It's only because of my mate, Barry, Barry uh, Henley, that uh, it's all been possible for me. Um, that's why I've given Barry Henley a shout of his scaffolding company, E E A N D E N Scaffolding, in Kentish Town, North West Five. I mean, my mate Barry, my mate Barry is just one nice, nice guy. He helped. I mean, he would help anybody out as such. But he's, I mean, Marvin Herbert. You know, he's give Marvin Herbert a home. You know, Barry. And that's what my mate's like. He'd give Marvin Herbert a home. Uh, him and what happened yesterday? Yeah, I done a, I done a, um, a, a quick video about. I haven't seen Marvin Herbert for ages. Uh, has anybody seen him? Is that never? And yesterday, uh, I phoned Barry up about uh, John Massey, and uh, he said, yeah, "Guess who's here?" I said, "No." He said, "Marvin." I went put him on the phone. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was just done a video about her, you know. Well, I'm Marvin, you going, mate. You know, Marvin is, don't she? Don't stop. Nah, about, you know, about him, about Marvin, yeah. And I'm saying, uh, how you been? What you been doing? He said, well, I'm busy doing what I'm doing. I'm busy doing what I'm doing. And uh, you know how it is. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Uh, I said, I said, what are you going to do, a film? Nah, I'd better run a film, mate. Don't worry about that. What I'm doing is a business. He said, everybody won't believe it. And I believe it. And I believe him, you know, because no one's heard from him. He's very, very quiet. Um, he's, he's, I, I like him, Marvin. I like Marvin, even though he talks about himself 24-7. I like him because he's got great stories about his life, yeah? Listen, when he comes across a story, it's a proper story, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Whether or not you believe it or not, but it's a proper, proper story. You know, and I love it the way he talks, yeah? And look at the views he's got. On Lad Bible, him and Bobby Cummins have got something like 12 million views. 12, 12 million? I think Bobby Cummins has got something like 8 million by himself. I think Marvin Irvin's got about 8.5 million by himself. By himself. At Lad Bible. That, I mean, I've got, what? I think it's half a mil, half a million, something like that, off of Lad Bible for two months. You know what I mean? So it's going to be good. Uh, I, was with, I was with Chrissy Lambiano when we done our one at Lad Bible. Lad Bible is a fantastic uh, company. Um, you got this Woodle, uh, Woodle, I forget his, anyway, you got this Woodle, uh, he's going to be bigger than Lad Bible, I think, yeah. He interviews people every day of the week, proper people. You know, he's done Yammy B, he's done Matt Legg, he's done Jimmy Tibbet even, yeah. He's done uh, Lewis Colton. You know, he's done, is it, I think it's Lewis Colton, isn't it? Lewis, Lewis, I mean, is it Colton? Anyway, um, you know, it's uh, the, the guy from from uh, Wandsworth, uh, Lewis, what's his name? I forget his name, sorry, mate. I'll, I'll get all mixed up with your names anyway. This kid was a gang, this kid was in charge of, of a big, big gangster company, you know, like they run uh, Wandsworth, uh, Proper street crime, proper street crime, yeah? And it, I mean, his story is fantastic. You should watch it, yeah? Um, but I love uh, this John Massey. Um, I'm very, very privileged, yeah? I'm very privileged uh, to be able to talk about him. I'm very privileged to be able to do um, a podcast with him. I'm going to do it very soon, yeah? I'm very privileged for, for him to ask me to come to tonight and, uh, you know, with the book. He's got a big drink up very soon um, in a pub. He wants me to go there and do compare, just to talk to him about crime and how he's coped with it and, and, and all that and the people he's met in prison, which I, which I which I'll more likely do anyway. It's on a stage. I'll be on a stage, sitting on a stage. He'll be there with me. We're sitting together and we'll just be talking about um, crime, uh, what sort of crime. I mean, he, he, obviously, you know, I mean, his crime is murder. Um... You know, but when you think of it, um, murder's just one of them things that happen, yeah? You've got people um, in prison, uh, domestic murders. You get more domestic, I think it's 75, 80% of people in prison are in for domestic murders. And it's just, 
you know, one of them spur of the moment things. You don't mean to murder the person, but it just happens. You know, then you've got maybe the other 10% that are just murderers, just go around killing people, you know. And you've got another 10% that um, it's, it's an accident, you know, a car accident, something like that, a swimming accident and all that sort of thing. Like not a swimming accident, a diving, so they can't get no air, someone's put, put something in their, in, their, in, their, in their oxygen bottles and all them sort of things, you know what I mean? And it's all different sorts of murders, yeah? But uh, obviously, but not. But I think there's seventy five percent of it, eighty percent of it is domestic, domestic murders, mate. You know, and you got. I, I remember um, uh, being in Lewis. Uh, there was a guy in Lewis. Um, forget, forget his name now. Uh, big, big guy, a powerful guy, with glasses. Um, and I said, "What are you in for, mate?" He went, "Life. I'm doing life, mate." He said, "How long have you done this for? Sixteen years." I went, fucking hell, what's that for? He said, I murdered my wife. Domestic, man. Domestic murders. You know, you, and you don't, you, don't, you don't look at it, people think, why the hell? And, you know, I mean, how many people have arguments with their wife? You know, how many people, have, I mean, I'm, I'm against uh, all that violence with women, but how many guys out there do hit their women, do slap them across the head? You know, how many women? Stab the guys in the back, hit them across the head with something. And there's loads of domestic murderers uh, in prison, women prisons. You know. Anyway, I'm not going to get on that. You can go all night about, all day about things like domestic murders and murders. But um, I just uh, want to talk about uh, John Massey. You know, uh, please try and get his book. As I said, it's called Locks, Locks. Bolts and Bars, or Locks, Bars and Bolts, yeah? John Massey. Please uh, get it. Um, it's a fantastic read. It's, I mean, it is a fantastic, fantastic read. I mean, he's read little bits out to me, and I think to myself, bloody hell, you know what I mean? And I've done what? I don't know. I've done, I'm doing an IPP now. I've done 10 years inside in the IPP. I've done 11 years outside. There's 21 years there. Without the big sentences, you know, I've done 26 years before that, before this one, so I've done 40 odd years myself. Do you know what I mean? And it, you don't think about it, do you? You know, and I've got um, stories. Um, listen, there's big stories about about um, about Bronson uh, in the unit and what they did to him and that, on all this that now. But believe me, yeah, um, my story about me being in the unit. Is a lot, lot worse than Charles Bronson's could ever be. It's, I nearly died. I mean, I was 19 stone uh, when they put me down there. And they just moved me about to so many prisons. In the end, I wound up in Chelmsford Prison, about nine stone. I lost 10 stone um, being battered, black and blue, and being beat. You can't beat the system. People forget yet, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how tough you are, how much gangsterism you are, enforcer you are, murderer you are, or whatever you are, yeah? Out on the street, you could be someone. People are petrified of you, yeah? But let me tell you something. When that judge sentences you to the, the, the sentence you're going to get, right? and believe me, that judge sentences you, that is your punishment. Whatever he gives you is your punishment for the crime you committed, yes or no? But no, your punishment don't start until you go for them big gates because you're going into a different world. There's a, this, this world here is so violent, so violent when you go for them gates. That world in there is so violent, you won't believe. People that have been killed in there is unbelievable. It's prison today is different to what it was in my time. In my time, uh, most of the staff and screws in there were ex-military police from army, from the war and all around that time. Yeah, Big, powerful um, people that just want to bash up people. And you remember, you're a gangster and you're a forcer, 
murder what you are, but once you're in there, you ain't doing nothing, mate. You ain't doing nothing. Honestly, you can't do a thing. It doesn't matter how hard you jump into 10 screws. You can't win. You can't win. Where are you going? You ain't going anywhere, mate. You're staying in there, and they just drag you down the block. In them days, they didn't used to give you liquid cost much, but you did. I've had it. I had it 20 times. I don't know really how many times, but... Um, they didn't give it much, only to people they did, really, really couldn't control. And if you got liquid cost down in places, you would get bashed to death, mate. You, they could beat you up. And you could scream and shout as much as you like because no one hears you. And the people that do hear you, what can they do about it? They can't do anything about it. People outside drive by these big, big prisons most of these things that happen, happen in, 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 in local prisons, Winchester, you know, them sort of places, Liverpool, Birmingham, Wandsworth, the Scrubs, Pentonville, which ain't there no more, but them sort of places, you know what I mean? They're the ones, they're the prisons that happens, they're the ones that, that, that want to kill you. Pentonville was really bad, I was told. I think they had a unit in there that um, used to glop people, uh, Pentonville had a wing there was that the, that was really really bad. People don't forget about Pentonville. They talk about Wandsworth. They talk about the Scrubs. Let me tell you something. Pentonville was really really bad. You got on that wing, mate. The hospital, we like an hospital wing, is you was in trouble there, mate. You was gonna get murdered, you know. And just like people out there have got to know. People out there don't know. You drive by. You drive by. Any big prison, and you look at it, the lights all lit up, it's all grey outside or whatever, and you've got no idea, you've got no idea what is going on in there, behind the doors. You've got no idea. When they're taking you down the seg unit and they're smashing you to pieces, you're screaming and shouting. You know, they killed my mate. I think it was, Je I think it was Jeff McIntyre or Clive McIntyre. Um, he was an IPP against the system. He was not guilty of the IPP, uh, but they found him guilty um, of murder or something. I'm not quite sure. GBH or whatever it was. I don't think it couldn't be murder. Otherwise, he got a life. But he's still alive uh, um, getting an IPP, but I think it was a GBH charge. Um, but he didn't do it. it I think it was uh, someone else. He didn't do it. it might be one of his brothers, but it, did, it wasn't him. And uh, you know, kept his mouth shut. I think he'd done about 12 years IPP, and they killed him. Um, imagine this, yeah. He used to steam into prison officers, screws every day. He always, I'm not, you know, why am I here? Why am I here? I need help. I've done 12 years. So I want to get out. I'm not guilty of this offence, yeah. Not putting anybody else in it, but the trial was concocted so much so that like, it, uh, he got a guilty. So he's against the system. So against the system, it's unbelievable. So what did he do? He used to fight prison officers, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon, evening or whatever. But one time, they had enough. They smashed him to pieces. Truncheons, they just smashed him to pieces. They give him all sorts of drugs. They put him in a straitjacket. You ain't moving. They put you in a straitjacket, you can't even breathe. Because don't forget, they're not bothered about what, what size they put it on, that tight, that so tight, when it's strapped up so tight that you can't breathe. That you can't breathe because there's nothing, there, there isn't no give, they're strapped up. They smashed him so bad here yeah, that they broke two or three of his ribs that went through his lungs and they threw him into a padded cell. He can't breathe, he can't breathe in themselves anyway, there's no windows in there. There's hardly any, any air in there at all. That's a padded soil. That's, that's punishment. You can't breathe. <gasps> you know, you can't breathe. You can imagine what it was like when they punch this guy's lungs and he's screaming, help me, please, I can't breathe. And they just laughed at him and shut the door. And in the morning he was dead. What a terrible way to die. You know you can't breathe and you're screaming for help and you, you're just in pain. And, and, and his sister fought for him. His sister fought in court and she won the case. They got a guilty, I think. Uh, not I think, I know. Um, but imagine that. 
Imagine that. And that is the sort of thing that happens in prison. So you've got people like John Massey that are telling stories like that. Telling stories like that about prison, about what they can do to you in there. Remember, once you get in there, what can you do? Baby in arms, mate. You're a baby in arms. They can do whatever they like to you. You can't do nothing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you're 18, 20 stone, ex-fighter, gangster. Doesn't matter. <laughs> this is going to come in dart you up with a tranquilizer and smash you to pieces. And what are you going to do about it? And what are you going to do about it? If they don't want to, and if they don't want to give you a visit, they won't give you a visit. They won't give you a visit. And everybody in prison, me, the same, I've had it. Big time Charlie Potatoes, you get smashed to pieces. You're not a big time Charlie Potatoes then, mate. They just rule you, yeah? They become bosses. And we all say the same thing. When I get out, I'm coming back. You're in trouble. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it never happens. We don't go back. <laughs> we don't go back. We never go back. There's only one that's ever gone back. That's Frankie Fraser. When he hung their dogs up, the dog up by his neck. And Basti Governor, I, well, this is what I was told. Um, whether or not it's true uh, is another thing. But that's what I've been told. Not I've, I have been told 100% about the dog being hung up. Well, I don't know about bashing the governor up, but that's what the, the, the dog was hung up, strung up, right? And that was it, yeah? Um, but I want people to realise, yeah, that someone like John Massey and people like Charles Bronson, Charles Bronson has got stories of him being downstairs. John Massey, has got stories of him being up in the system. So there's more stories about being up in the system and there is about being downstairs, but well, there's not a story. Because all you got is a cell within a cell and that's it. He's fantastic uh, at doing pictures, at writing poetry or whatever he does, yeah? But the stories he's got, He's okay. He's been up on the system. He's been up a few times, and he can't. He can't. He can't control himself. Put. He can't control himself. Put him being put on a wing with other people. Um, I feel that Charles Bronson is going to get a decat. He's going to get supervision, but it's like everything, isn't it? You got to remember, he is going to be one of them people that. He's going to be in the limelight. He's going to be, everybody's going to want to interview him. He's going to earn a, lot, a, a fortune. And there'd be kids out there who are going to think, who's this old man? Who do you think he is? He's only got to go into a bar or a pub or a club and shout his mouth about. And people are just sit about him and bash him up and hurt him big, big time. That's what he's got. That's, what they're, that's why they're frightened to let him on the street because of them reasons, yeah? We've all got that, we've all got that, you know what I mean? I'm the same, you know, if you go out before you went in prison, before you went in prison, before you went in prison, you was a chap, you know, big time Charlie Potatoes. You come out after the first time, you're still big time Charlie Potatoes, come out the second time, then you get involved with big people, you become a great big enforcer, Everybody's petrified, you go away again, come out, and all of a sudden, no one knows you no more. You're nothing. You're nothing. No one respects you, the person you are. No one knows, who the fuck is this geezer? Who do you think he is? And you've got kids out there who just come out and plunge you ten times in the back. Bop, 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 bop. Who's this guy? He's nobody. That is the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem that we've all got when we get older. You know what I mean? We've all got that when we get older. Um, I don't really um, go to clubs and all that bar game no more. I'm still an IPP, uh, so I can't afford that. But it's not about me, it's forget about me. It's about uh, John Massey. Um, 
and Barry Henley, my mate Barry Henley, mate, and a photograph, E A N D E N D scaffolding, A N D scaffolding. Look, I'm like first in the morning, I get all tongue tied. And uh, he needs a leg up, my mate, uh, Barry, Barry Henley. He's a gentleman, mate. How many people out there have got big companies right, that find it really hard? Everyone is like finding it hard a minute to earn a living, yeah? But my mate Barry gives help to John Massey and he gives help to Marvin Herbert. He's given Marvin Herbert a home. He lives in a mobile home in my mate's yard. How good's that? How good is that? And helps him out, gives him a few bob here and there, make sure he's got food and all that. How good is that? My mate Barry Henley, listen, I'm telling you, E-A-N-D, scaffolding. Check it out, Kentish Town, NW5. My mate Barry Henley, that's a proper, proper, proper man. You know, check him out, mate. And look at the scaffolding company. Check him out. Give him a leg up, mate. Give him a leg up, yeah? And don't forget uh, that John Massey, tomorrow, 7 o'clock, Lady Hamilton Pub, Kentish Town, is, and the book is called Lock, Bolts, Bars. That's the name I think it is. Right? Buy it. It's a fantastic read. But more so, when I do a podcast with him, that's going to be the business. That's going to be number one. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Way Hill. Please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you so much.